Hello everyone and welcome to this video mini-series. This is part one, how to begin in Stormworks. Now that said, this is not a video for people that are advanced in building, that know all the intricacies, all that good stuff. This is for people that have just gotten the game, that want to learn how to build creations and understand the way the game works, and begin their Stormworks adventure. So, without further ado, let's begin. When you come to the main menu here, you hit new game, here you get a world seed, it's really an array of different locations of the same islands. So it's the same base islands, but spread differently in the world. There's Reddit discussions about what's the best world seed. We're just going to leave it like this for now. Now you have career mode, where you complete missions with survival style. So there's no respawning. It's quite difficult and very challenging, but also very fun. Then you have the classic mode, which has a research three, a research tree, third person and teleport and custom which is sandbox style if you're trying to just build things this is where you can start so for sandbox it doesn't really matter you start at your creative base now here you could turn on your add-ons depending on what you want in your game you may want to disable your dlc weapons ai i always do so they don't attack you for trying to build also natural disasters i will turn off if i'm just building because in this case you won't get the tsunami wave you could also turn off creatures just to make it as um, optimal for you to build. Obviously, this is your, your decision and your choice. Lots of this stuff. Now here, you have two other tabs. Saved ones, you'll probably not have anything because you won't have worked on anything. But Workshop is if you've downloaded things on Steam. Now that's kind of interesting. If you've never played a game where you have to download things from Steam, then you're missing out big time. So what you do in Steam, you press Workshop, and here you get an insane amount of vehicles that people have made that you can use and enjoy. So it's honestly super cool to just explore the different types of creations. Uh, you open something up and it's as simple as pressing subscribe. Once you've pressed subscribe, it's gonna appear in your workshop, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, this is a vehicle. It's different for vehicles and for missions. If you go down here, you can actually have environment mods, which will add things like this one adds a bridge, really cool. Um, so this one you subscribe, it appears right here. So item, the add-ons you've subscribed to Steam, here you have some add-ons, but you can select one or not, go back here, you can turn on your DLCs and get going. Now you wait here for the game to start. Here's the next step, you could build your little avatar, all sorts of customization and you press complete and it'll start off here on the island you selected. Now, because we selected sandbox mode, you can hit escape and custom menu, and you could lock your weather. You can make it nice and sunny. You could make it noon, so it's not turning into night. You can also set all these other options here. I generally leave this as it is because I don't want infinite electric. I don't want infinite fuel. I want to leave it such that it's realistic to when I go to my career mode and play. And then if you hit M, if you scroll out, you'll see that your islands are not uh, defined. You have to go explore. So if you're just building, you can reveal the map. You can unlock all properties. So if you go to map now, you see your islands. Okay, fairly easy. So this is just getting started in the world of building. That's if you hit M, it takes you here. That's fine. Like I said, escape. You can go to custom menu. Um, Next. You go to your workshop, obviously. Also, if you hit home, you can do like a no clipping. So you can get yourself debugged out of places, which I just learned recently, actually. Many of you may already know that. It's fine, there's a bunch of shortcuts you could learn. So the way they have the game organized is, if you find my, if I find myself wherever I may be here, on the custom island, center player, there we go. So we sent our player. Here we are at the Coast Guard outpost. So they have your fast travel location, which is where we spawned. And it doesn't show you on the map, but you could see here, there's this big hangar. And then there's a dock over here. And you see this little blue bench. And there's a blue bench over here. So this is better. This one here is better for making airplanes. Obviously, it's in a hangar. And that one over there is better for making boats. Clearly, you could make trucks and land vehicles here as well. You can't quite make them on the water dock portion, but that's sort of how it's separated. Also on your map, they have other locations that aren't identified such as this gas station, 
where you can also spawn vehicles. So it's not always a base that you may have where you spawn vehicles. They could just be scattered around the map, but I'll let you figure all that out. So you go here to your workbench and press E or Q and it'll open up like this. So if you've never built anything before, this may be a little bit intimidating. You'll be looking at this. This does actually look like a structural software. I mean, as an engineer, I work with stuff like this all day, but if you have only played first person shooters or racing games or even, you know, role playing games or whatever, this is not quite that. This is a little different. So what you can do is if you hold your right mouse button, you can psych, you can pan around. And then if you use your arrow key or A, S, D and W, you can move up and in and out. You can press Q and E to move up and down. Now the mode I'm using is determined by the camera settings, which is free mode. So you can reset your camera and you're back here. It's like an isometric view. If you've done engineering, you know, isometric is this kind of 3D view. But regardless, that's where you can have full, uh, where you're able to move around. If you hold, hold shift, it moves a little slower. If you let go of shift, it moves faster. If you have it on orbit mode, it acts a little differently. Here, you're always orbiting around whatever point is in the center of the screen. So if you press the middle mouse button, you can drag and you could actually make, say this corner be your center. And then you can press the right mouse button and you're actually orbiting around that point. Um, hitting the left mouse button doesn't do anything here. That's only for building. But if we reset ourselves back here, so you could see how the orbit mode works when holding the right mouse button versus free mode holding the right mouse button, sorry, free mode holding the right mouse button, you actually are the camera. I like free mode. For me, that's more like an engineering software. Actually, sorry, it's less like an engineering software. Most engineering software is you pivot around a point. I actually like the free mode because it gives me a little bit of separation from what I've been doing all day at work. So that's here under camera settings. That's probably the first thing you'll need to set up just because you'll need to understand how to operate things. Now, there's an arrow here that determines the front of your vehicle. So if you have a truck or airplane, that should be the front. The reason why is because if you hit this here, world view, it shows you the actual location you're building. So, I mean, you could build it that way, but you'll have to back it out. And it might also give you some issues in the game, more like weird glitches. It shouldn't actually happen, but if you have got gyros and things pointed in the wrong directions, it could sometimes get funky. Anyway, that's worldview. It's not easy to build with worldview on. It's good if you're building a base or something on land. We'll get to that later. So back to the cube. So with our cube, if you're in the metric system, it's 0.25 of a meter. So meaning four cubes is one meter. And if you turn the ruler on the measurements, if you do this in the bottom right corner, you see in the red, it says four, 1.00 meters. Whereas each one is 0.25 in the different directions. So if you're not in metric, you have to figure out the conversion of that. This game is in metric units. So what I want to do before I start is delete everything else back to our simple cube and now explain the different buttons. So symmetry, this is good, especially in the X axis. If you're building a ship or whatever that needs to be symmetrical car. So it kind of lets you put on things about your x-axis here, the red one. Now you can move your x-axis, but it does become a little iffy at some point. Like you could do this and then you start, sorry, and then release that. And then you could be building within different symmet symmetrical locations and then you could move it back. So it does give you that function and option. Just be careful that you're putting it back in the right place like this. Otherwise you'll end up with, you potentially could end up messing up your design. We're just gonna hit new vehicle here, back to our single cube. So that's the symmetry. You get different axis or axes of symmetry or have it disabled where you can build free form to whatever. The next button is section plane, which comes into play when you have a big creation. So take for example, this truck. If you turn on the selection plane, you can actually cut into and cross section the creation to get easier access. Obviously it'll be whatever side you're on is what it shows you, but it's much easier to potentially think of how to do this interior instead of if it looks like this and you have to crawl in. So that is something to consider. I tend to actually just go inside like this rather than um, use this, but it is an option 
Probably for a car it wouldn't matter, but imagine a massive ship that has many compartments. Um, it is good for that. So you can disable this again. The next button is camera like we discussed. Center of mass. Now that is important in engineering and here. So if we turn on the center mass, you see that this little purple thing appeared here, little purple cube, and it's telling us that our mass is right here in the gear shift, which is pretty much centered on the vehicle itself between our two wheels. So that's probably a good place to have the center of mass and definitely in the center. Now, if you go and add a weight block to, to say this side add a bunch of weight, it will move offset and now it's showing that it's not centered anymore. So if that's a boat, you're, you're gonna have it wanting to tip over. Just like in Word or anything on Windows, Control Z will remove whatever you've done, just like out here, and you could also redo it. So Control Z or press the button and it's gone. So that's the center of mass. The direction arrows are what we see here, and they're very important if you're having any type of piping or mechanics. So as you can see without it, it looks like this. And if I turn on the direction arrows, it shows all these blue things. Blue things here on the wheels show where the wheels are gonna spin and how they're gonna rotate. Down here, this is actually a pipe. So if you come here, it says it's easier if it's white, but you could see that there's a pipe straight and then there's a pipe angled. And if you Google here, or if you not Google, if you search pipe here, you can get how it looks normally and how it looks in an enclosed form. The enclosed form is very important if you're trying to make a sealed container. So keep that in mind, we'll get to that in a second. Back out here, sorry, back out here, uh, that's one of the things that it shows. Then it also shows these things. These are paintable indicators and paintable signs like we have here. So generally anything that's, call it, part of the mechanics or part of how it works beyond just being a visual block, it's gonna be showing up when you have this arrows on. So it's shown on components is what it says. Now here's rotation labels. This is with these labels on. Generally I turn this off, but for your, when you're learning, it's not a bad idea, especially if we take this one and then if you press I, it'll actually flip it around. Like it says, K will rotate it. O is doing nothing because it's flipping it like this. But if we have something that is only one directional like this, if we press O, it rotates. And then if you press U, it rotates the other way. Likewise, J and L. So that's only good if you're beginning. Probably don't need it on all the time. Grid lines, that's like if you want to see how it looks not in the various parts, or if you want to see how it looks with the parts, I tend to build with the parts because then you could actually see how it looks like as a block rather than as the completed structure or creation. I always keep the measurements on, it just tells you how long something is. So as you drag this, you can see the bottom right corner, it says it's nine blocks wide. If you pull it out like this, it's also two blocks uh, tall or in length. So in the other direction, in the blue direction, it is now 0.5. So I keep that on. World view, like I showed you, is this. And then here we have editor warnings for anything that's not connected, which is not bad for troubleshooting. So you can see here, and we're gonna get to that in a second, there's a little icon on that backup sensor and some in here. So we will get to that, but that's not bad for troubleshooting, like I said. So that's on the side. On the top here, we have our exit the editor. Obviously, we're back here. If we press E again, we're back here. We could spawn the vehicle. So here we have it spawned. If you press E or Q, whatever you've parked here will be brought back into the workshop. Now, why that's important is because if you're playing career mode and you have a limited amount of money, this creation has a value. So when you press this, your money's returned to you. Whereas if you leave it out in the land, you don't get your money back. So if you've sunk your ship, you can't get your money back for the value of the ship. You have to start from scratch. That's just how the game works. It's not like a purchase and lose the money forever. Consider like a trade-in. You bring your, you use your vehicle and you could trade it in for the same cost that you bought it for. That's spawn and that's what it says, the mass and the cost down there. Now new vehicle, obviously we're back to our cube if we do this. You could save your creation. 
and you could upload it to the workshop. So when we built something nice, you press this button and you could actually upload your vehicle to the workshop. Now into the technical stuff. So using this truck as an example, if you press select, it says select components to change their properties, selectable components will be highlighted in blue. So it kind of goes into like a skeleton view with everything that is editable further than like call it a dumb block like this that just you know it's a building block but something like this indicator it actually has certain things like it says it has a backlight electric and it has some sort of function so what the function would be is you could actually write a display name likewise for your wheels you could change the stiffness the damping of the suspension the saw the grip the size of the tire all that stuff can be changed right here and that's what this serves. This also works for your microcontrollers, which we're gonna get to in a second. It works for buttons, for labeling them. You'll figure this out pretty fast. But anyway, erase is obvious for deleting things, or if you press X, you can also delete things. It's quite fast, much faster. Paint, this is for painting. You have several options. You could either brush, where you could do this. You can be additive. This took me a while to figure out for stuff like this, for changing the color of the bulbs. You can replace the whole color, so this is gonna replace every brown, that's this exact shade brown to pink, as you can see, and we'll do it for the side brown here. And we can just hit Control Z, and we're back to where we started after before having begun deleting things. Fill plane is a bit more uh, advanced to learn, pretty much it'll fill whatever plane you're on, but if you have something like this, or here it's possible on a ship like a hull that it'll actually continue and delete or recolor other things but once you've figured out how it works it generally selects all the items that are there the next button is move so you can move your vehicle within the bounds of where you're working and the nice thing is is it keeps your axis your x symmetry with it so no matter where you put your vehicle your symmetry axis will stay with it the only way to move the symmetry axis, like I said, is here. The next item, once we've turned this off and turned this off, is logic. Logic is a big thing, let me tell you. Logic is how the game functions. It goes from being a simple thing like Lego blocks, where you're just clicking blocks together, to where you're defining and coding things. Now you have your data, which is pretty much the transfer of numbers, like the green is numbers, and on off switches, which is red. So I've started us off from scratch. What we're gonna do is extend this. We're gonna put a toggle button on the end here. We're gonna put a light right here, and we're gonna put a battery. So consider a flashlight. This is a very basic flashlight. You have your on off button, you have the light, and you have a battery. I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom so it doesn't fall over and we're gonna go and walk to it and I'll show you how it works or how it doesn't work. So clearly pressing E or Q, nothing happens unless you turn on your infinite electric, in which case it does, but it's not connected to anything. But we don't wanna play with infinite electric, we wanna be realistic. So we take it back to the workshop or workbench. You need your logic, so very simply, your button turns on your light and your battery powers your light and it powers your button. Now, one thing that I've learned is not to put things in series like this. If the light is the one that's sort of connecting these both things, if you delete the light, nothing's collect connected anymore. So I always tend to connect everything to the battery just like that. Now, if you cover over the battery, you could see that it's selected both of these little plus icons, so they're connected. And here we have our logic set up, so if we spawn this creation, now it will work. We're going to press our button, and the light is going to turn on. So there you have it. So that's two types of logic. That's data, and that's the electric. Now, your battery, if you put a dial, you can actually have a reading of your battery charge. Now the way that this works is it just takes the charge and it'll display it on this dial. You can also use the select to write battery charge. And you could remove the negative, there's no need for negative. Here you could put light, so now you've 
define your buttons. You could make it start in an on state. You could make your light infrared. Your battery, you can also adjust where it starts at. Good for testing. So that's now a very basic system. And you're, you're also battery charge. Your dial has a backlight. So you could connect it to two things to this. So note your outputs, you can connect to multiple things. You could have one button turning on many things, but you can't have this backlight for whatever reason going on to this one. So you have to have, and also likewise, you can only have them go to one place. You can't have this, sorry, this backlight charge be turned on by many buttons. Like if I put another button right here and you try to drag this, it doesn't work. It only allows one. Now there are ways around that obviously, but for starters, that's just what the, how it works. Now on the side here for logic, we also have composite, which is something we'll get into later. It's more advanced. We have video feeds, audio and ropes. Ropes are very simple. You can just have your rope anchor and you can connect your two rope anchors to each other. And that'll give you sort of a little rope thing like that. And you could do that same for cables and for um, hoses. So there you have it, that's your logic step. Now the next thing is this, merge bodies. Now this is something that took me a while to learn. Pretty much the way Stormworks works is there's different bodies. So if I press this, it'll highlight in red the main body. And then here's all the secondary ones. We have a hood, we have the doors, we have the tailgate here. So all these are kind of different bodies that are on the creation that are linked to a pivot or something but it means that they're not quite attached they're using some sort of mechanical item to be attached but that's not all in the case of spawning mini trucks like this each one of these is their own body meaning they're all their own separate piece you can connect them if they're touching so if i link them together like this and go to merge See now I've selected this, it's all green. I could select this and press that. And now these two trucks are actually attached and they can be only driven together. They can't be separated. If you delete this, they will still remain attached. So the only way now to unattach them is to go to the selection grid or either you know undo or you go to your selection grid, select the whole thing and press cut. Make sure you've cut it and then paste. And now they go back here. Now they're their own separate thing. So this is how you add lifeboats to a ship. This is how you add ROVs, how you do anything that I like to do with my creations where you add multiple things. This is how it's done. And the nice thing is when you, you can actually spawn things here. So if you press merge, pardon me, selection. So merging is only for merging things, but if you press selection, it doesn't show the bodies, but it gives you this little thing on the side here. So this is where if you have a ship or a boat or airplane or whatever, you could actually spawn other things. So let's imagine I want something on the back of this truck. You can actually press selection grid. You can load it from your workshop. Say I want this quad for whatever reason on the top of this. You can put it just like this and now it'll spawn on top of it. But like we said, it's not attached. The bodies are not attached, so it's gonna fall off if you start to drive. They're fully separate pieces. But in here, like I said, you actually could do this and attach it. And now it's literally a part of the truck. And even if you drive the bottom truck, that's gonna stay attached. So that's how these things work. This took me a while as a beginner, so hopefully I was clear. And the last one is microcontroller editor. Sorry, if we come here so you can paste things, you can clear the external logic. So it's good if you've cut something like this, paste. This thing here can now be cut and you could clear the external logic if you have logic. You can reset the grid also. You can clear it fully and be back to where you were. And then here, resize grid, like I showed you here. Reset grid just makes it simple. If you press control, you can actually select items on your creation and then shift kind of selects things in between. So that's a good way to select most of it. And then you can go here and select whatever is remaining just like that. And then you could cut it if you want to move it around. This is another way to move it outside your grid, like the symmetry thing. If you paste here and go to this, remove that. See, now we've actually pasted it away from our symmetrical axis. So imagine if it was sitting on a ship, you could actually reposition it wherever you want on your ship, just like that. 
Ah, you can make copies of it too. Okay, now the microcontroller part. Back to our very basic block. Say we create ourselves a little platform. And for lack of uh, something else, for just very simple basic beginning point, we're gonna put our battery example again with our light switch and our singular um, toggle. So you said you wanted to have two buttons potentially turning this light on. We'll connect all the logic so everything's connected to the battery. If you hold control, you can select multiple things. If you press it again, it will deselect like with your mouse. So press left, it'll select it. Everything's connected. We want this button to turn on the light, but we also want this button to turn on the light. They argue with each other. You can't have both. So luckily, there is a microcontroller section here, right here, and you could find your OR function. You could find all sorts of functions. You could have AND functions. All these have a different thing. We're not going to go through that in this video, but if you search OR or find it there, you can have it like that, put it there, and now there you go. You can now select this and this and plug it into this. Now both lights will turn that on. Another easier way just for the light example is you don't actually need this. Just so you know, you could have one button turning on the light and the other button manually turning on this button and then this button also manually turning on this button. That will work the same way. However, this only works really for things like this. Or button is good, or the or command is good for other things that you'll find across, you'll come across as you're building. There, but for example, things like the blinker, you can't replicate. So if you have the button go into here and this go into there, forget this one, we'll just lead it for now. The blinker will allow you to actually have the light blinking on and off. And you could select which speed it blinks at in here, how long it takes and all that stuff. So all of these microcontrollers or logic, sorry, is good for that. Now that's pre-made logic, whereas if you press the microcontroller button, you come here, and that's a whole nother world and a whole nother video. So, in this video, hopefully we covered the basics, where you can actually build all sorts of things, and hopefully begin your Stormworks journey before getting into the crazy and advanced stuff, because this game has so many advanced features. This is just the basics. Um, hopefully learn something if you've made it this far. If not, Congratulations, you're already good at building. And uh, yeah, as always, happy stormworksing. Stay tuned for the next video.